Hello friends and welcome to what I'm hoping will be a new series of videos that I am titling Faith Chat Fridays. And I've been wanting to do this for quite a while. Um, and I know right at the outset that there are many of you that are probably not going to be interested in this video. And that's okay. They're all going to be titled Faith Chat, so Faith Chat Friday, so you'll be able to just skip them. And please feel free to skip them. But I've also noticed that there is there, there are a lot of people in this community um, that have been open about their faith. You know, some have been very open about their faith and and, and talked uh, freely about it. Others have just sort of opened the door, said that they're, they're they believe in God and and God's very important in their life. Um, I think that's something we should celebrate. I think that's something that another one of the things that brings many of us together. Um, beyond just this, this object here. Uh, we have a very diverse community in, in terms of spirituality. We have several uh, priests in the community, we have pastors, we have various ministers, uh, we have many faithful Christians, we have uh, a, a few uh, uh, faithful Jews, and we have a few Muslims as well. And we have things that are, we all hold in common because of those beliefs. And I would like to have a conversation about the things that we have in common, the things that bind us together as men of faith. Now, the truth is there's more than enough information out there on YouTube and every other media platform about the things that divide us. Uh, you know, things like, well, the Catholic Church is right or wrong about this thing. Yeah, that, great, but that doesn't help us. That's just drawing a line between us. What about the things we, bo we both believe? Now, I'm going to ask that we be a little bit exclusive about this discussion, uh, and, and with apologies to my atheist friends, but the truth is we, on this topic, we just don't have common ground for debate. You're welcome to watch, I hope you do, but I'm not going to engage a non-believer in a debate uh, on this platform because it just isn't, isn't helping anything. Again, I want to try to focus on what we have in common, and maybe talk about our differences in a way that we're explaining them. We're explaining what we believe and helping others to understand us, rather than defending our position or trying to convert someone else. So to try to show each other that we really are seeking the same thing in the end. So one of the things that got me thinking about this uh, seriously it's, it's been in the back of my mind for a couple of years now, to be honest, but uh, I recently shared with you a very nice gift that uh, my friend the Artful Codger gave me, and I, I don't have it with me, but it's that Zippo lighter with the Medal of St. Benedict on it. And I said I'd like to do a video talking about the Medal of St. Benedict. And I thought about it a lot, and I, I want to do that still, but I realized, you know, I'm Roman Catholic. A lot of you guys are various evangelical Christian um, you maybe not, you don't have the same point of view on the saints that I have, and this might be something that you might even find offensive if I just launch into it. So I thought maybe it would be good to first off talk a little bit about what I believe in terms of, of saints and prayer and, and, and holy medals and things like that, and then explain the, the, the imagery behind the, uh, the lighter. And I need a platform to do that. I can't just do that in a normal you know, Sunday pipe chat. It doesn't make sense. So that was one of the big reasons I wanted to, to try to, to, to launch something like this. But also, I just think that there's a need for it. And I, I'm hoping that you guys out there will be willing to engage in a conversation with me, with, with all of us. You know, let's do this through video responses, VRs. Don't, not the comments. I mean, comments are great, and I certainly will read and respond to comments, but I can't have a meaningful conversation in a few sentences. If you don't make videos and you want to join in, make a video. It's not that hard. If you don't want to be on camera, point your, cam point your cell phone camera at a tree or something and just talk. It'll be fine. Um, it's easy to upload and there's really no barrier to that. This is a discussion. This isn't about having a YouTube channel with a million views or anything. It's just a, a, a opportunity for us to talk about what might be the most important thing in the world to us.
Now, if you do decide to join me in this and, and, and engage in the conversation, please put Faith Chat Friday in the title of your video so that we can find it. And that's just one word. You'll see it in the title of my video. Uh, I've already searched YouTube. That doesn't turn anything up, so we're, we're golden with that right now. Uh, this way, if I or any of you want to search for things, you just Faith Chat Friday and, and you'll find them. Um, also, if you want to let me know that you've posted a VR, just do it in the comments to whatever uh, video is relevant. And I will make a playlist of all the Faith Chat videos, my own as well as those of others. And uh, we'll, we'll keep these together. We'll be able to go back and revisit them. And hopefully we'll, we'll all grow in our faith by sharing the things that we have in common and the fact that we are all just seeking to be closer to God. So with that, I'm going to let this video sit out there, and I'm going to see what kind of response I get. And, you know, I'll wait a couple weeks. If nothing happens, then this will be the last Faith Chat Friday video. If there does seem to be interest, if, if I see some VRs, then I'll, I'll continue the conversation. And uh, I, th I think this can be a really enjoyable and valuable experience for all of us. So with that as preamble, uh, I'm not going to talk like that ever again. I just wanted to sort of lay, to, lay out what I wanted to do with this. Uh, let's talk about the, the, a, a faith topic that I think is worth discussing and an obvious one to start with. And that is, you know, why do I believe in God? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult question to answer. The answer I'd like to give, but it's not true, uh, but the answer that I want to be true desperately is the answer that I believe C.S. Lewis gave. And I can't remember the exact quote, but he said something like, I believe in Christ the same way that I believe in the Son. Not because I see it, but because I see all things by its light. And that's beautiful. You know, that's saying that when I look at the world, I see God in the world. And how could I not believe in that? The truth is we're men of faith, not knowledge, and sometimes our faith is tested, and it's not that easy. I wish it was, but it's not that easy. So why do I believe in God? Well, the first, most obvious thing is I was raised to do so. You know, I was raised Roman Catholic. I still am Roman Catholic. And I was, I'm old enough that uh, I still remember having to memorize the Baltimore Catechism. And to you younger guys that haven't had the pleasure, you're lucky. It was a long document. It was a question and answer format, very Socratic in its outline. And and it was good. You know, we learned the foundation of our faith through this document, but it was rote memorization. And I remember we were actually told at our confirmation, which is a sort of milestone in, in a Catholic's uh, induction into the, into the church, at our confirmation, which occurs in like fourth or fifth grade, we were told that the cardinal, who was going to actually preside at the Mass, would, during his homily, randomly pick children to answer questions from the Baltimore Catechism, and you had to know the answer or you couldn't be confirmed. Uh, this was a fantasy created by well-meaning sisters <laughs> that wanted us to learn our Baltimore Catechism. We were terrified. It never happened. The cardinal was a lovely man. He never never intended to, to grill any child in front of the church. Uh, but we all had to memorize these questions, and the question that I most remember is question six from the Baltimore Catechism. Why did God make you? And the answer to that, and I, it's, it's here, but I also wrote it down so that I get it correct uh, word for word. The answer is, God made me to know him, to love him, and to serve him in this world, and to be happy with him forever in heaven. It's pretty simple, right? He made me to love him, to, to know him and to love him, and to be with him forever. That is such an integral part of me because I learned it at such a young age, and that, that when I think of God, the first thing I think of is, He loves me and He wants me to love Him. So that's colored my whole experience of the world. You know, when I, when I look around the world, I do see God in the world. I'm not saying I'm, I'm a saint that never has his faith challenge. There are times when I say, how could a God let this thing happen? Uh, but there are many, many times when I look out and I say, wow, look what God did there. And to me, that's, that's somewhat obvious. 
I'm not at that C.S. Lewis sun level of obviousness with this, but it has colored my view of the world to the extent that I, I see him. Now, I've already kind of indicated this, but I have not always been a faithful Catholic. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm far from being a faithful Catholic in, across the course of my life. I'm, I'm a sinner like everyone else is. You know, we, we are broken, fallen people. But I've tried, and I've never lost that sense of there's a God out there. I sometimes might have questioned my approach to him, his approach to me, um, all sorts of th human things, but I've never doubted that he was there. Now, you might argue, if you, if you know me or if you've followed me for any length of time, you would know that I'm a scientist, and you might argue, well, scientists don't believe in God. That's silly, because science is, is the new religion. That's simply not true. Uh, there have been um, polls done of scientists in the past 10, 20 years uh, that have been remarkably consistent in showing that about 60% of scientists are not only believe in God, but are faithful believers in God. You know, churchgoers, uh, people that go to synagogues. That they're not just people that say, oh yeah, there's a God up there, but they're, you know, they're part of an organized religion. 60%. And I would argue that probably a lot of the remaining 40% are agnostics because they have grown up in a society that forces them to some extent to be agnostics. You know, I count myself as being lucky in those early formative years that I had that infused into me so that I don't have that sort of bitter cynicism that I see so many others in the world have. The truth is that as a scientist, I get closer to the mysteries of God. I see things every day, I'm a biologist, um, I see things every day that just marvel, that make me marvel at uh, the hand of God in, in our world. The things that I'll never understand. You know, I, I study the brain, I'm never going to understand the brain. It's, it's a remarkably complex machine. It was built, there's no question in my mind, it was designed. And in that design is the hand of God. So, my exploration of science actually brings me closer to him. Um, two more points that I want to make about why I believe in God. Um, the, the first is prayer. Prayer works. I've seen it work. Uh, I've seen it work not just when I need things, you know, and, and that's, that's the image that a lot of people have of prayer. You know, oh, I'm sick, I'll pray to God and I'll get better. Oh, my child is sick, I'll pray to God and he'll, he'll save the child. Well, yeah, that does happen. But that's not uh, the bulk of, of prayer. You can pray to be thankful. Your child gets better. You, you praise God. You thank Him for that. And you can pray just to pray. Just just to be close to Him. Just just to be able to say, God, I, I love you. You, know, you can pray to praise Him. Uh, to, to, to exalt Him. Say, Lord, you are you are uh, the King of all. You you are the Master of my life. There's value in those things, and I can't explain it. But I know that when I have prayed like that, I have received grace for it. I'm not saying it's magic. I'm not saying that you know if I do that every day, I'm going to get a easier job or a new car or anything. No. But there are times when I'm challenged where I feel more at ease. There are times when I look at tragedy and I feel more capable of handling the, the information because I feel that I'm closer to God and that, that proximity comes from prayer. So that's, that's the fourth reason uh, that, that I'm laying out here for, for why I believe in God. Uh, first one was that I was raised to do so. Second, I haven't always been a faithful Catholic but have been brought back uh, many times and have never lost that initial um, understanding that God is there. Third, I see his hand in everything I do as a scientist. I, I, I see him working in the world. Fourth, prayer works in many different ways in my life. And that that really should be enough. And it is enough for me. I, I leave it there. But there's, there's one last thing that I like to talk about when I'm talking to folks that don't believe. And and that is this, uh, this, and you've probably heard of this, there's a concept called Pascal's uh, 
wager, gamble, gambit. It's called all sorts of things. Uh, it was an argument put forth by Blaise Pascal uh, in, I think it was the 1700s. I'm not real good with dates uh, sometimes, and this is one of those times. But uh, Pascal put forth the argument that it is logical to believe in God because you're essentially gambling. And what you are doing is you are giving up a finite reward. All the things you would do if there was no God. You know, so debauchery, uh, drinking, you know, lust, all, all those kind of things, all, all the seven deadly sins. That's a finite reward. But you're risking an infinite reward of being with him in eternity. You're also gambling on an infinite punishment of, of hell. So how can you possibly put your chips down on the side of there not being a God? Because the, if, if you're wrong, you've lost an awful lot. If you're right, you've lost nothing. You've lost a tiny, finite uh, reward. So that's called Pascal's Wager, and it really, it's hard to get around that. I mean, you know, you could just say, well, I don't care, and, and go on with your uh, debauched lifestyle. <laughs> not not that I think any of you are doing that, you know, but um, you, you could just put it aside and say, I'm going to live my life according to what I believe are the best moral guides, and, and you could do that, but think of the risk, you know. I don't know why you'd want to. So anyway... Those are the reasons why I believe nothing terribly profound there. Some of it's just cribbed from other people. The Baltimore Catechism, Blaise Pascal. Um, but a lot of it has to do with seeing his hand in my life. I would really love to hear other folks' uh, thoughts on this or any other faith issues. So with that, guys, I'm going to tie this up. I thank you all for taking the time to watch. Let me know if you think this is a good idea or a terrible idea. And I may react to either of those. And until we talk again, may God bless you all.